A95 of the situation dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, and it is day 10 of the situation dealing with the civil unrest after uh, the murder of Mr. Floyd that we all saw on TV. The president held up the Bible the other day in Washington, D.C. Here in New York, we actually read the Bible, and there are some passages that I think are especially appropriate for today and this time of where we are. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God, Matthew 5. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. That was Mark 3, actually, before Abraham Lincoln. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Psalms 34. The seed whose fruit is righteousness <clears throat> is sown in peace by those who make peace. I think those words are all appropriate for where we are today. It's another quote that I think is uh, applicable to where we are today. You can't use the military as a political weapon. You remember who said that? I said that. There's another quote. The option to use active duty forces in law enforcement, use forces in a law enforcement role, should only be used as a matter of last resort and only in the most urgent and dire of situations. We are not in one of those situations now. I do not support invoking the Insurrection Act. Do you know who said that? Secretary of Defense Mark Esper, appointed by President Trump. You can't set fire to the house and then claim you are the one trying to put out the flames. You know who said that? You guys are not well read. That I can tell you. A.J. Parkinson said that. Last night we had continued protests across the state, but there are two very different situations that are going on and we have to keep them separate, and we have to address them as separate situations because they are night and day. One is protesting, and the other is looting. They are two very different situations. Some people choose to morph those two together. All the protesters are actually looters, and we should treat them as looters. That is not a fact. That is not the truth. That is not the reality of what is going on. There are people who are protesting. And there are people who are looting. Very, very different situations. The protesting is righteous indignation over Mr. Floyd's murder and systemic racism and injustice. And you listen to their point, I think they're right. You look at that Mr. Floyd's murder on television, and it is reprehensible. There is no police officer in this nation that would defend that. And people are appalled. And again, it's not the first time. You can't say, well, this is an isolated incident. Mr. Floyd was one in an ongoing series. Ahmed Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, you can go back to Rodney King. You can go back to Martin Luther King. There are dozens and dozens of the same case. Righteous indignation. It's more systemic racism. Righteous indignation. It's systemic injustice. Righteous indignation. Yes, but don't be violent because when you are violent, you lose the righteous indignation. When you are violent, you play to the critics who want to say, oh, they're all violent looters. They're all a criminal element. And that actually defeats 
the righteousness of the message. Mr. Floyd was nonviolent. He was nonviolent against the police. The crime that they were possibly investigating was a nonviolent crime. Violence actually demeans the situation and loses the righteous indignation. And I would urge the protesters to respect the curfew because the curfew is necessary because the police have a real job of policing dealing with the looters. And the looting is criminal behavior pure and simple. There's no righteousness. There's no message. There's no indignation. These are opportunists who see the police are busy dealing with the protesters, and they say, well, here's an opportunity to loot and to steal and to cause mayhem. That's all they are. This is criminal behavior, period, designed to create chaos. Well, there are anarchists in there also. Fine. It's all illegal behavior. And we will not allow our cities in this state to be in chaos, period. Public safety is rule one. Maintaining order is rule one. It's not going to happen in the state of New York. We're not going to allow the looting that we've seen on videotapes, the chaos that we've seen, period. The police must be empowered to keep order, stop the looting, and stop the criminal activity. Distinguish between the protesters and the looting. Yes, you have police action which is necessary uh, to work with the protesters, but the police have to be there and be empowered to stop the looting and the chaos and the criminal behavior that people are trying to exploit this moment for their own selfish criminal purposes. And the police have to be able to do their job. And the police have to be supported in being able to do their job. I've sent New York State Police to cities to deal with these protests. They have to have the right numbers. They have to be empowered to do their job. And we've had protests again last night all across the state. Uh, I want to applaud the local police who have done a great job. I want to applaud the state police who have done a great job. The protests were mainly peaceful all across the state. Uh, and I want to thank all involved for keeping it that way, protesters included. New York City last night was much better. Uh, the protesters were mainly peaceful. The police officer had the resources and the capacity to do their jobs, and the results last night were much, much different than the night before, and that's what it's all about. Uh, and I think the people in New York City should feel much better today than uh, they did after the night of looting. These are perilous times. There's a lot going on, and we have to understand what's going on and the, the difference among the issues that we're dealing with. You have the COVID crisis. You have the murder of Mr. Floyd, two very different situations, but both critical in and of themselves and both happening at the same time. It's then wrapped in an environment and a dynamic that is racially charged and politically charged. Uh, it makes it a very, very perilous time in this country. And we have to be careful. We have to be very careful because the consequences are steep on both sides of this equation. Uh, so leadership, good government, responsibility is more important than ever before, especially in these divided times. COVID-19 is still a real threat. We're still battling that. Uh, I know it's not on the front pages today, but it is still in people and in society. We're still battling that. That is going better than it has ever gone in New York. We have the lowest number of hospitalizations ever, and we have the lowest death toll ever. And God bless the people of New York for what they did. 
God bless the nurses and the doctors and the essential workers and the frontline workers, because they saved hundreds of thousands of lives in the state of New York. We have to remember what made us successful during COVID, that we're New York tough, but New York tough is, is multifaceted. It means New York smart. If you're going to protest, protest intelligently. Remember, the COVID virus is still out there. So protest intelligently. We're united. We're not black and white. We're not upstate, downstate. We're not red and blue. We are one state, one community. And we came together that way. We're disciplined in fighting this COVID. We're disciplined in having our right to protest, but doing it peacefully and in a, a way that respects uh, law and order. And we are loving at the end of the day. Yes, we have issues. Yes, we have challenges. But we've shown how good we can be as a community and how much we respect one another and the sacrifice we're willing to make for one another. Let's keep that spirit that we developed over the past 95 days. Let's keep that going because that is pure magic. If we stay united and we stay loving and we stay smart, we're going to handle all of these issues and we're going to be the better for it. We've overcome the greatest challenge that this state has faced in my lifetime with this COVID virus. This was the beast that we didn't know if we could beat. But so far, we've beaten it. We have to stay smart to make sure we control the beast. But we did it. We overcame. We, the people, overcame together. Last words for today. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12. That, my friends, is New York tough, smart, united, disciplined, and loving. Questions? Governor, uh, how do we tackle the power of police unions and the need to change culture within local police agencies and the wider criminal justice system? Your policy ideas don't really hit at the issue. Why aren't bad apples being called out by colleagues? And will you allow the release of state troopers' disciplinary records under 50A? Well, you have a lot in there. Uh, there are necessary reforms uh, that need to be made. There's no doubt about that. Uh, that's, uh, I hope, the positive legacy of uh, the injustice that was done to Mr. Floyd. Uh, many of those policies are already law in the state of New York. Uh, 50A, the disciplinary records, uh, I hope will become law shortly. Uh, and uh, we have to respect everyone's interests there. And I look forward to doing that. And I think the legislature is prepared to do it. Uh, and uh, I think they're going to be coming back in the next couple of weeks to have those conversations. And will the culture change in the power of police unions specifically? It's something the mayor has talked about, sort of trying to change the culture. How do, how do you know, as governor, what's your role in sort of trying to um, get local agencies to start thinking about this idea? Yeah, I don't know what the mayor was referring to, so let me find out what he said, and then I'll comment if appropriate. Governor, you brought a, di a Bible to the dais today. That's an obvious reference to what the president did on Monday. What do well, you make? Well, I said it was. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's but, why it was obvious. <laughs> I, said it. I, I got it. Um, what do you make? You're saying even if I didn't say it, you would have figured it out. Absolutely. Well, of course. Um, what do you make of the president's recent, recent attacks on New York? What do you think he's trying to do there? Is he trying to rile his base? Is he trying to make legitimate criticisms about your stewardship of the state as well as the city? Well, far be it for me to psychoanalyze the president of the United States. Uh, I have a law degree. I have no medical degree, as I've told you, and I have no degree in psychoanalysis. Uh, it's nothing new for the president. He's not just attacked New York in tweets. His policies have been vicious to New York. Uh, he changed the tax code in a way that increased the taxes in New York and other Democratic states. Uh, he has failed to do anything positive for New York. He's gone out of his way to be negative to New York. Now, uh, why, you know, is it politics? Who knows? That's for someone else to answer. But the negativity 
Uh, forget the tweets. You know, who cares about the tweets? It's what he's done to the people of the state that bothers me. What he did with SALT, uh, refusing to fund urgent transportation projects that hurt the entire Northeast, uh, like the Hudson Tunnels, uh, stopping the Second Avenue subway. I mean, all these egregious acts uh, kicking us out of the Trusted Traveler program with the, the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, just this punitive uh, policy because they don't like that we won't give them the driver's licenses for undocumented uh, people. So they punish us with the Trusted Traveler program. I mean, that's, there's a whole uh, from day one in his administration, you have seen negative, hostile government acts. And then, by the way, the most recent ref refusal to fund state governments, which is negative to New York, but it's also negative all across the board. But you did praise some of his corona action. Right? Yes. There have been good things. Uh, helping us with Javits and the, uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers and the additional beds, that was very helpful. And look, I said from day one, I'm not playing politics with the president. Uh, when he does the right thing by New York, I say he did the right thing by New York. Well, Democrats don't like me to say that. It's the truth. When he does a bad thing for New York, I say he, does the, he, he did a bad thing. And it's good and it's bad. I, uh, I think I was in the White House last week. We had a meeting. But have you seen this week at all? No. About Governor, uh, you, you I'm sorry. How duty troops from Fort Jerome were sent to D.C. to help out law enforcement there? Do you have a comment on that, and how do you feel about that? Uh, well, yeah, I don't think you should use active military for political purposes. I don't believe it's constitutional. And now you have his Secretary of Defense saying that they shouldn't be used. Now, how can the Secretary of Defense say that and then do it? <laughs> That's another question. Uh, if you don't believe it's right, uh, when you pull up uh, Secretary Esper's quote again there, please. If you don't believe it's right, why did you do it? You can't do it and then say, I think it's wrong. So you just admitted that you did something that was wrong? Well, look at his quote. The option to use active duty forces in a law enforcement role should only be used as a matter of last resort and only in the most urgent dire of certain. We are not in one of those situations now. I do not support invoking the Insurrection Act. Then how did you do it, Mr. Secretary? Question for him, not for me. Jimmy? Governor, you know, that's clear about active duty military, but can you talk a little bit more about the National Guard? How close was Well, the what were they in the question was... Uh, about active military in Watertown, right, Fort Drum? Yeah, that was the question. question. Okay. So how close did you come to uh, activating the National Guard for New York City? Did you ever suggest to city officials that you thought the National Guard should be on standby? And just shed a little bit more light on that and when you think it would be appropriate to do that, especially given your statements now about using active duty military personnel. Oh, National Guard are different than uh, active military personnel for political purposes. Uh, National Guard, uh, we deploy for public purposes. Uh, we deploy them to help with the COVID virus. We deploy them for storm emergencies. If they were deployed for New York City, that's not a political purpose. Uh, that's to help the uh, police function in New York City. Uh, so that's, those are not political purposes. But we did not send, the National Guard uh, in New York City, I said yesterday that uh, there was a terrible night of looting. Uh, I was prepared to send the National Guard to help to provide the resources if the city needed them. But I said, I don't believe uh, the NYPD needs the National Guard they're the largest police force in the United States of America. They're like 36, 38,000 people. So I don't believe they needed the National Guard. I believe, believe there was an issue of management and deployment of the NYPD. You know, you have to remember the NYPD, first on a personal level, I grew up in Queens. You know, I grew up with the NYPD. You know, my neighborhood, 
Uh, a lot of my friends uh, became uh, police officers in New York City. It's the best, a little New York arrogance, but I believe it's the best uh, police department in the country. Uh, and we know the police officers can handle these situations because they have, right? We've gone through the Sean Bell situation. We've gone through the aftermath of Amadou Diallo, aftermath of Abner Louima. We went through Crown Heights, uh, the Gavin Cato uh, death. Uh, and then we went through the aftermath of Crown Heights. There was a whole report done on Crown Heights uh, that studied what happened. It was like four or five days of riot. So we, we've done this. You know, This has been there, done that for the police. The police officers know how to do it. These are the best. Now, a police officer needs support. They need the right deployment. They need to be empowered. They need the capacity to do their job. They have to know that they're backed up. They have to know that if they're out there, they can do what they have to do. If they have to arrest somebody, they have to arrest somebody. They have to have the right gear. So uh, they have to get the support that they need. But they're the, the, it's not about the NYPD. And by the way, one other point. Uh, forget everything else. It's about getting results, right? Uh, I'm here to get things done and make life better for people. We got results. Last night was a much, much better night than the night before. So it worked, we got results. Let's just remember uh, what we did last night and let's keep that going. Governor, the, the Rutscher County Executive is urging businesses there to ignore the phases and just suggesting to them that they open up right away if they so choose. And he's also starting a GoFundMe page to help pay fines if there were any fines. Do you have any response to that? Well, I don't think telling people to violate the law is a good idea. Uh, and somebody tells you to violate the law, that's not an excuse when you violate the law. So you still get the fine or whatever the penalty is for violating the law. You would still be liable. You would still get sued. Uh, and you will still be closed down. Uh, and you'll be penalized. And, you know, I can tell you, yeah, you should get up and assault Jesse. I think you should do that. Yeah, but you go to jail. <laughs> Let's take one more. That was a few, um, this morning, this morning on one of the radio shows or one of the shows downstate, um, Chief Monahan of the NYPD said that you called him to apologize for your remarks yesterday in regards to the NYPD. Just wondering what um, what that conversation was like when you spoke with the chief, and um, again, what. How, how, how did you come to that conclusion? Yeah, i make it very simple. Uh, first, I never spoke to whatever that person's name is. I spoke to the police commissioner uh, and said the same thing I just said to you and the same thing I said yesterday, uh, which is it's an issue of management and deployment. Uh, the actual police officers are the best. Uh, my issue was with the management and deployment never about the police officers. Uh, it's, it's about the management. It's about the deployment, not about the officers. Thank you very much. I'm taking my Bible, and I'm going back to work.